Professor Gilman. That was a great talk. Thanks so much. Great audience today. I don't know if you remember me. My name is June. I'm a master gardener. Hi, June. Good to meet you. Hi. This is my husband, Sebastian. Hey, Sebastian. How you doing? Good. Um, would, do you have time to sign our book? Hey, absolutely. Thanks so much for picking it up. Have oh, you, sure. Have you read it yet? No, but I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, good. I, go look. Do you have time for a quick question about sustainable fertilizer? You know, that's actually great timing, but could you wait just a couple oh, of minutes? Sure, sure. Thanks. Hey, Sebastian. You had much coffee during the talk today? I did. Well, how about you come along with me? You want to buy our glass? Yeah, I tried an open beaker. What a mess. Hey. Hey. Oh, no, what is that? Explain. Okay. Oh my god, what is that smell? Oh, we pick a bad night to have asparagus. Oh, oh. So, you said you had a couple of questions on sustainable fertilizers. I'd <laughs> love to answer them if I could. Okay, yeah. I, people, people are always asking me about them, and I know you do a lot of research on that. Could you share your thoughts on some that you like and some you don't like? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, the one that I don't like is rock phosphate. The reason I don't like, like it is it comes from strip mines in Florida. Obviously not very sustainable. I also don't like it because people tend to use just too much phosphorus for their plants. You don't need nearly as much as most people add. In terms of some that I like, love cottonseed meal, love alfalfa meal. Good, renewable fertilizers, a little bit pricey, but very solid fertilizers. They'll give your plants what they need. Those are, I like both of those, but they're a little spendy. You're right. So do you have something that will be less expensive? Well, they are a little bit spendy. And yeah, there's some lower cost options. The best lower cost option is compost. No two ways about it. But compost does take a while to produce. So the next, the next one that I'd recommend is uh, urine. I mean, it's beautiful. First of all, that golden color. And second of all, it's got all the nutrients that your plant could possibly want. Loaded with nitrogen, plenty of phosphorus and potassium. Now, there are a couple of problems with urine. The first problem being that it's so concentrated that you need to dilute it down before you use it. You need to di dilute urine about one part urine to about ten parts water before applying it. If you don't, you'll end up with a dog spot on your lawn or just plain burning your plants. The second problem with urine, also extremely important, is that though urine does exit the body sterile, it picks up microbes quickly. So if you put it on edibles, there is a possibility that you could infect your edibles with something that you don't want to catch. So keep urine away from your edibles. Okay. Now, Sebastian and I were discussing uh, we're discussing the amount that you'd need for a plant in the restroom, and the amount that he put out today is probably appropriate for three or four container plants. Um, I heard that you had a few things to fertilize. Is that going to cover your needs? I, uh, you know what, just in case, why don't I give you oh, a little oh. bit more. There you go. You're, you're absolutely set now. That's going to cover probably everything that you need to cover, six or seven container plants. Um, you know what? I should really get going. I actually had another talk this afternoon. It's been really great seeing you guys. Uh, you can return that Erlenmeyer Meyer flask um, anytime. Be sure to wash it well before you do bring it back, though. Thanks. Okay. Take care. Okay, well, thanks, Professor. Thank you. Did that splash on you? <laughs>